everything we're going to talk about today is pretty much a review of what you've learned in your math classes. So um, this is just a refresher. What we want to be able to do is be able to convert between scientific and standard notation. You should understand that 1.2 times 10 to the 2 is the same thing as 120. So that when you see answers written in different ways, you know that they're the same number. Um, some of the meaning of the co most common exponents, so we'll go over that. Um, be able to enter your scientific notation in your calculator. I know most of you did it in chemistry, but some of you may have forgotten, so we'll go over that. And then we're going to review your laws of exponents just to see if our answers are reasonable. So when we do scientific notation, we need to keep in mind, really, is it a decimal number or is it a large number? So decimal numbers are going to have negative exponents and large numbers are going to have positive exponents. And if you think about it, think number line, okay, negative exponents down here are small numbers. These numbers are smaller and these numbers over here are bigger. And as your exponent gets smaller and smaller and smaller, 10 to the minus 10 is smaller than 10 to the minus 5. Because 10 to the negative 10 is down here. Okay, so let's say we were doing 120. Okay, we can write it as one point. Okay, scientific notation always has a one or a number then the decimal point, then the rest of the number. We can have the zero or not the zero. It doesn't, it matters if you have sig figs, but we're not doing sig figs, so don't worry about it. Um, so if you wrote 1.2, that'd be perfectly fine. Now we need the times 10 to part. Okay, it's 120. Is that a big number or a small number? It's a big number, it's bigger than one. So it's gonna have a positive exponent so we're going to go 1.20 times 10 to the, now we need to figure out how many places did we move that decimal point. It always originates at the end, if it's like a whole number. So we moved it one, two places, so it's going to be 1.20 times 10 to the 2. What if we were going to do 1.2 times 10 to the 5th? Okay, that's a big number, positive exponent. So we're going to take that 1.2, we're going to take that decimal point and we need to move it five places. And since this is a big number, we need to make it bigger. So we're going to take that decimal point and we're going to move it over five places to make the number bigger. 1.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to fill in those blanks with zeros. And so we're going to end up with 120,000. And if you put this into your calculator, your calculator will give you 120,000. If you put 1.2 times 10 to the 5th into your calculator, then hit enter, you're going to get 120,000. What if we want to do 0.000000, however many zeros this is, 1. There we go. All right. Big number, small number. We're going to have to put the decimal behind that one. And let's count how many places we need to move that decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we had to move it nine places, so we're going to make the exponent a nine. And since this is a decimal number, we're going to make it negative. So. 0 0.000001 is the same thing as 1 times 10 to the minus 9. Those are the same exact number. Okay, so what are some of the numbers you should know? Well, 10 to the third, okay, that's 1 followed by three zeros. That's 1,000. And 10 to the 6 
is one followed by six zeros. One, two, three, one, two, three. What's that number? That's a million. Okay, do you see how just having those numbers as kind of touchstones can help you, you know, at least, am I on the right track here? So 10 to the minus three, if 10 to the third is a thousandth, that's a thousandth. Thousandth, which is point zero zero one. Okay, so it, this is ten to the minus three is like one times ten to the minus three. Okay, and so you take the one and you're going to move the decimal point, which always originates at the end. And this is ten to the minus three, so it's a decimal number. So you're going to make it a decimal number, and you move it three places: one, two three and that's how we get point zero zero one okay but it's a thousandth and so what would 10 to the minus 6 be it would be a millionth since 10 to the 6 is a million 10 to the negative 6 is a millionth and so it would be and it, it's kind of the easy way to, that I think about it is one less zero. So it's five zeros. One, two, three, four, five, one. And if you see, if I'm going to put that in scientific notation, one, two, four, five, six. That's one times 10 to the minus six. All right, so we've gone over how to convert from standard to scientific notation. That was step one. And we have the meaning of some common ones, like 10 to the third is 1,000, 10 to the second is 100. And honestly, I do not feel a need to ever write anything in the hundreds in scientific notation. Honestly, in the thousands, I don't generally don't write that in scientific notation either. Um, in the thousandths, I might, but even still, you know, it's not, this is not going to kill me to write out. Um, but once we get bigger than 10 to the third, 10 to the sixth, um, then it is often very useful to use scientific notation. But you'll see other people write, you know, 1.2 times 10 to the two. Why don't you just write 120? It's not that hard. Okay, so we're going to go to entering it into our calculator. Okay, so here's your standard TI-80,000 calculator. And let's say we wanted to put that 1.2 times 10 to the fifth into our calculator. All right, now here's what you want to do. <laughs> but I don't want you to do this, okay? You would normally go 1.2 times 10, and then you'd hit this caret button five enter okay that works it does work okay I know you've been doing it and it works but one of the problems with it is that when we're dividing numbers then your calculator does orders of operations and you have to use parentheses and it creates math errors there's it creates calculator errors but we'll show you in the next slide how to figure out if you have a calculator error. Okay, so here's what I want you to do instead. I want you to find this button right here. It's right above the seven, and it's the second function, and it's the EE -E button. I want you to use the EE -E button. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to hit on your calculator, you're going to go ahead and go 1.2 and then you're, you're not going to say times, there's no times, no times. Then you're going to go hit the second function button because you see it's in blue so it's a second function and then you're going to hit the EE -E button. What that does is tell your, tells your calculator, hey guess what this is a scientific notation number, keep the whole thing together please. And so then you just put in the five. So 
1.2 second EE5. So try that on your calculator right now. And when you hit enter, you're going to get 120, 1, 2, 3, as we saw on the previous slide, which is 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, because we move our decimal point over five places. One, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's our 120,000. So your calculator is sometimes going to display this. Sometimes it will say 1.2 E5. That means 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. You need to make sure that you look over here at the end for an E. Because sometimes you know, it'll be like 1.245678910. And then it'll say E5. So you need to make sure you look for that E at the very, very, very end of the number. Now one little neat trick is if you put in your calculator alpha, so the green alpha button, it's right there, the green alpha button, and then you hit the Y equals button. Alpha y equals, okay, if you hit those two buttons, what that's going to do is that's, then it'll bring up a dialog and you want to hit in the dialog one and that says n slash d, numerator slash denominator. And what it will display on your screen is a bar with two little boxes on it. And so if you're going to divide two scientific notation numbers, this is one way to make it so that you don't make some math errors. So let's say I was going to take that 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, and I was going to divide by um, 3 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to go 1.2 second EE5. Okay, I'm going to put that on top. And my display will look like 1.2E5. And then just push the down arrow. And then you can go 3E negative 3. Make sure you use the negative button. Okay, not the minus button. Okay, 3E negative 3. And then you should get a big number, actually. doesn't seem like you should get a big number, but you're going to get a big number divided by 4 or 3. See, I'm doing the math in my head. So, you, whoopsie. Clear. Oh, yeah. 1.2 second E5 divided by 3 second E negative 3 you get 4 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. So your calculator is not going to put this in scientific notation. And you're going to have to recognize how many places do we have to move that decimal point? Let's see. 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to have to recognize that 40 million is the same thing as four times 10 to the seven. Okay, how about those laws of exponents? Okay, so how did they work? We had 1.2 times 10 to the fifth, and we divided by 3 times 10 to the minus 3. It seems like we should have gotten a small number, but we ended up with 4 times 10 to the 7th. Okay? All right. So your laws of exponents. If you're just manually adding and subtracting without your calculator, okay, you need the same exponent on your 10s. Okay, so 
Um, but if you can put them in your calculator, if you were adding 1.2 times 10 to the fifth and 3 times 10 to the minus third, you just put it in your calculator and your calculator doesn't care, it's fine. Um, and you should recognize that this is a very small number. Okay, that's a very small number and you're adding it to a very big number so it's not gonna appreciably charge, change your very big number. When you are multiplying, you add the exponents on the 10. So if we were multiplying our 1.2 times 10 to the fifth and our three times 10 to the minus third, what we would do is we'd add five and negative three. So we'd get something that was 10 to the two. Okay, five plus negative three is positive two. So we get something that's in the hundreds, somewhere like that. So it'd be close to that. And what's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So when we divide, what's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. Look at that. Doesn't that make sense? So we're going to subtract our exponents. Okay, so let's use that to see if this answer makes sense. We're going to take 5 and we're going to subtract a negative 3. And that's going to give us 8. Okay, so we should get something on the order of, which means on the order of means close to 10 to the 8. We got 10 to the 7 that's on the order of 10 to the 8. So as long as it's within one, you're close. It's fine, it's fine. Um, if, if you did this and you got 10 to the 2, your laws of exponents will tell you that you did something wrong. So you might make a, just make a note to yourself, add the exponents, subtract the exponents. Okay, so here's what we went over today. We went over converting between scientific and standard notation and your scientific notation has like one number and a decimal point and then the rest of the number and big numbers have positive exponents decimal numbers have negative exponents some of the common exponents like 10 to the third is a thousand 10 to the second is a hundred 10 to the six is a million we use the ee button to enter our scientific notation into the calculator and then we used our laws of exponents to check the reasonableness remember when you multiply you're going to add the exponents and when you divide you are going to subtract the exponents so that is a review of scientific notation and you're going to practice that when you do your metric conversion worksheet and I will see you later have a good one bye bye